Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Anjum Rashid and today I will discuss encopresis in children which is also known as fecal incontinence. Now first what is encopresis? Simply it is the involuntary discharge of feces that is fecal incontinence. It is of two types. First is encopresis with constipation that is retentive encopresis and second is encopresis without constipation. Prevalence is 1 to 2% of children younger than 10 years and 80% of the affected children are boys. It is more common in males. Now pathophysiology is that chronic constipation due to irregular and incomplete evacuation result in progressive rectal distension and stretching of both the internal and external anal sphincter. As the child habituates to chronic rectal distension, he or she no longer senses the normal urge to defecate. Now soft or liquid stool eventually leaks around the retained fecal mass and this results in fecal soiling. Now the sign and symptoms. There is history of constipation, sometimes very remote or painful defecation in 80 to 95 percent of the children with encoperesis. There is also inability to differentiate between passing gas and passing feces. Now soiling episodes usually occur during the daytime when the child is awake and active. Soiling during sleep is uncommon. Now with retentive encoperesis, there is intermittent passage of extremely large bowel movements. Now on physical examination. Other than those from abdominal and rectal examination, physical findings are usually normal. Unless contraindicated, a digital rectal examination should be performed on every child with encoperesis. Now, abdominal examination reveal a palpable stool throughout distribution of the colon, especially in the left lower quadrant. Now, rectal examination shows stool smeared around the anus, legs and petulous anal sphincter because chronic rectal distension is associated with reflex relaxation of the internal sphincter. Now, rectum is enlarged and filled with soft stool that yield negative result on fecal occult blood testing. Now, neurological examination should be normal. Patient should have a normal anal wink and normal sensation, strength and reflexes in the lower extremities. Now, the DSM-5 criteria for encopresis. First, repeated passage of feces into inappropriate places, whether involuntary or intentional. Two, one such event occurs each month for at least three months. Three, occurs in children at least age four years or of equivalent developmental level. Now the behavior is not due to physiological effect of a substance or another medical condition except through a mechanism involving constipation. Other problems to be considered in the diagnosis include Spina bifida, meningomyelocele, spinal cord injury with dysfunction of the anal sphincter, tethered spinal cord. Ultra short segment Hirschsprung disease that is congenital aganglionic megacolon, imperforate anus with fistula. Now the laboratory workup. In most patients, the diagnosis of encopiresis is established on the basis of history and complete physical examination including a rectal examination. Laboratory studies are rarely warranted. The following studies may be helpful. Number 1. Plain abdominal radiography. This may be helpful in determining whether a soft fecal impaction is present or not.
Number two, abdominal manometry. Many children with encopericis have mega rectum, as evidenced by diminished sensation to distension of the rectum during the balloon insufflation. They may also have paradoxical constriction of the external anal sphincter during attempted defecation. Now, anorectal manometry can also be helpful in excluding ultra short segment Hirschsprung disease, which is a rare cause of encoparesis. Now, biopsy Although Hirschsprung disease is rarely associated with encoparesis, this can be excluded by identifying ganglion cells in submucosa and myenteric plexus of the rectum. A biopsy specimen can be obtained either by surgical means or through use of a suction device. Now the management, conventional medical therapy. It is commonly the first therapy attempted and include demystification and education, colonic disinfection followed by routine laxative therapy. Now agents that can be used for disinfection include polyethylene glycol, sodium phosphate, magnesium citrate and enemas. Virtually any laxative can be used, provided that it is administered in sufficient quantity to produce 1 to 2 soft stools daily. 3. Toilet training which is composed of regularly scheduled toileting, maintenance of symptoms diary and an age-appropriate incentive scheme. Fourth is the establishing age-appropriate rewards and consequences. Now biofeedback therapy, efficacy is yet not proved. Biofeedback training focusing on teaching the child how to relax the external anal sphincter during active straining. Then is the dietary requirements. No evidence suggests that dietary interventions are beneficial in the management of encoparesis, although high fiber diets are beneficial. Then is the intensive behavior program. Consider this if a child has not experienced significant clinical improvement after 2-4 to four months of therapy. This includes demystifying the condition and educating patient and families, providing specific toileting instruction about appropriate positioning and straining. Designing a program of regular timed and uninterrupted toileting and maintaining a symptom and toileting diary. This also include defining specific achievable target behavior and strongly emphasizing consistency. Now the prognosis. Even with aggressive medical and behavior intervention, 30% of the children remain symptomatic. Family disorganization correlates with a poor response to all forms of treatment. non retentive encoparesis may be associated with oppositional defiant disorder and conduct disorders. Now, urinary tract infection may be associated with encoparesis, but it is more frequent in females than in males. Thanks for watching, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.